Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So welcome to this very first episode of this mini-series that I will be uploading on my channel about this very large, important and hotly debated topic about sex, gender and our self-perception of who we are and of reality. Uh, and I really wanted to make this video because I think that um, there is a lot of confusion at the moment going on about these topics. Because of the LGBT+, plus, um, transgender, gender identity movement, they are really undermining and they're changing definitions. They're trying to change biology. They're trying to change nature and reality, how human beings are and how human beings behave and how human beings should be. Uh, just because of you know, their own self-perception of reality, their own truths, uh, their own feelings. And they're trying to change and impose their views on reality and on society. Uh, and this all grounded you know, on this misinformation about what science has and, uh, uh, and what nature and what reality is. And uh, especially for younger people, I think they're very confused at the moment. They don't know really what sex is, what gender is. Uh, they have a distorted view of reality and a distorted self-perception uh, that culminates in the fact that you know, they, they are lacking self-analysis self, uh, and they're lacking critical thinking. They do not uh, try to understand if what they hear or what they read on social media is actually true, it's a reliable source, or if our, you know, it's true uh, data, true evidence, or if it's not. Uh, they are basing everything uh, about how they feel, uh, how they view themselves. Everything is based on happiness, on if they feel good, if uh, they are attracted to, you know. And, uh, and this can be very dangerous ways to measure reality and to have self-perceptions. So hopefully with these videos, I'm going to bring some clarity to these issues uh, and, uh, um, you know, bringing science, bringing facts, especially. Uh, and then I'm going to also bring you the biblical perspective about this, the true biblical perspective, because unfortunately there's also a lot of misinformation and misinterpretation uh, and hate uh, towards what you know, the Bible teaches, towards what Christianity teaches regarding these topics. And so we're going to try to take also a look at that. So in this very first episode, I'm going to talk about sex. So biological sex. What is sex and how can we define it? Uh, and now if you just search on, on Google, biological sex, you can see that there are many, many different websites and the word gender appears right away. And uh, now it's very, very important for this video and also in any case you are approaching to this conversation with this topic to understand that sex and gender are different words. They are referring to different things and uh, they have different definitions. So if we take here a look at Wikipedia, what it says, uh, it says here that sex refers to an organism biological sex. Gender refers to social role or the personal identification of your own role based on your own perception and awareness. So you can see that sex, biological sex, is grounded in biology. So it's grounded in science, what the facts are, you no know, objective truths that we can all study, we can all analyze, we can say if they're right or wrong, we can say that if they're true or false. Instead, Gender is grounded in the social cultural environment and especially on your own self uh, identity and perception and therefore is everything but science uh, because of the fact that it's just grounded in your own truth, right? It's in your own personal subjective way in which you view yourself. So it can't be falsified. It can be analyzed, you know, unless you are speaking and unless you are telling others what you are feeling no one can know what you're feeling, right? So that's why it's subjective and not objective. And so that's the first thing. Remember, sex and gender are different. We're going to be taking a look at sex in this episode. Gender I'm going to be discussing in the next episode. And that's why, even though in ordinary speech, these terms are used interchangeably, uh, we shouldn't do that. So that's why I've tried to lay down some definitions. When I'm going to be talking about sex, I'm going to be always referring to biological sex not to gender and uh, now what is biological sex it's very very easy biological sex is defined by the gametes so for those organisms that reproduce sexually so that means that they produce sex cells the um the way in which we know which are the males and which are the females is very simply by which types of gametes they produce 
So females, by definition, produce large gametes, so the large sex cells, also called X or ova. And the males, by definition, instead, they produce small, and usually motile gametes, sperm. And that's it. That's it. That's the definition of biological sex. There isn't anything more to be added. There are no more gametes. There are no more you know, sexes. That's it. It's binary. Sex in biology is binary. Male, producer of small gametes. Female, producer of, of large gametes. There is nothing about uh, chromosomes, about genes, about the sex expression of the biological sex. Those are are all operational and secondary traits of sex. But in biology, the definition of sex is based on this fact, on the fact that females produce large gametes and males produce small gametes. Now, of course, there are some exceptions. There are some organisms that do not reproduce sexually. These are called asexual organisms. There are some plants, there are some sea animals, there are um, even some bacteria, uh, fungi, you no. Know, that reproduce in this way. So they do not produce gametes, they do not have sex cells. So in a way, they we can't classify them as males or females because they don't have a sex, because they do not produce gametes, right? So that's how, it's a very easy way to understand. And some examples here are many dif different type of lizards, uh, sometimes of, once again, starfish, sometimes of fishes, sometimes of uh, sea animals, um, or microbes, or even, uh, as I said before, um, plants as well, they're all, they can have uh, some of these species, you know, the kinds, they have an asexual reproduction. Uh, there is another uh, exception to this, is that there are some animals that do reproduce sexually, but they have the ability, so some uh, species that have both organs to produce large gametes and small gametes. And this uh, is what we call hermaphrodite animals. There are some plants as well that are hermaphrodite, but there are also some uh, hermaphrodite animals. And on this time, on this kind, we find especially worms. Uh, we find some type of fishes, and snails, slugs, and uh, um, and yeah, sometimes of uh, sea, like the seashells, you know, things like that. And now in this case, these animals, this word. Uh, means pretty much that they produce both large gametes, so they're both male and female, either at the same time or during their lifetime. There is a, a time in their development in which they're producing small gametes, so they are males. And then when they develop and they reach another stage of their life, on their development, instead they start producing large gametes, so they become females. Or the contrary. So we find we have studied different type of fishes, different kinds of fishes that have this uh, kind of subsequ subsequential hermaphroditism, as it's called. So they are uh, for a certain stage they are either males or females, and then they turn as they mature. Uh, worms instead have this uh, dual, uh, this like true hermaphroditism, if you want to call it like that, because they both like they produce small gametes and large gametes at the same time. Uh, they can't auto reproduce. They always need another member of the same species, but uh, it's very interesting. And um, and that's pretty much the, uh, the the exceptions of the rule. Remember, even though there are these ex exceptions, most of animals and most of the animals that reproduce um, sexually, you no, know, they there are they are binary in the sense. So there are either males or females. And remember, these exceptions don't, don't come to question the the binary. The dichotomy of sex, the fact that sex is either you know, male or female, there isn't anything more because there are no other types of gametes. And uh, now I just wanted to show you this article because this is an example of an article that uh, misrepresents or brings some uh, either some lies as truth or just right away it's just false statements or wrong statements. And the already the title of the article says here why here's why human sex is not binary once again remember sex is not gender so sex human beings are uh, classified as mammals and all mammals are binary so their sex is binary they're either males or females oops sorry uh, so it can be anything other than that uh, and then here they say on the mini title ova so eggs large gametes don't make a woman and sperm don't make a man but here there is a problem Woman is not 
biology. Woman is gender, so it's a social construct. And also man is a social construct. Con uh, it's a social word. So, uh, you know, uh, we're talking here about biology. We're not talking about gender. So that's why this mini title here doesn't make any sense. And it's just a, a false statement. And then here, there are some problems here with this article. I'm just going to show you here some. For example, they say here, the animal kingdom doesn't limit itself to one biological binary regarding how a species make gametes. And that's completely false because we know that those animals that do reproduce sexually, they either produce large gametes uh, or small gametes or both in the case of hermaphrodite or both at the same time or during their lifetime. But there isn't any other way in which uh, a sexually reproductive organism can reproduce. So this again, this is a false statement. Uh, and again, here it says, scientifically speaking, animals with the capacity to produce ova are generally called female and sperm produces male. Again, this is, uh, they're adding here the word generally, which is false. It's not like generally these are called females or males. These are always called females or males because by definition, males are the producers of sperm and females are the producers of eggs. So that's, an, again, an, a wrong statement. Um, and then here they make some examples as of the exceptions, right, of the rule. And it says here some worms don't produce both, produce both, which again is true because some worms are hermaphrodites. Um, some fish start producing one kind and switch to the other, which again is true. Some switch back and forth throughout their lives. And again, this instead is something that hasn't been definitely proven yet. Uh, and then here they say there are even lizards that have done away with one type altogether. And this is again a false statement, wrong, because lizards that do not reproduce sexually, they reproduce asexually. So they don't even have gametes. So it's, it doesn't even, it's not even related to this article. So again, it's just the, the, like the misusage right, of data and of evidence to support these uh, statements that at the end of the day don't make any sense because you see human sex is binary and that's what biology, that's what science says. And unfortunately, the, there are exceptions in which humans have sex characteristics, sexual characteristics that are not as easy to see. Uh, for example, how we can differentiate when a baby is born, right, for males from females, because the fact that males have the penis and testes, and said females don't. So that's how we uh, assign what's called the assigned sex at birth. Uh, but in order to really go to the biological definition of sex, we should see, okay, is this uh, person, this human being, producing large gametes or small gametes. And that's how we can know which their sex is. And many of these people, it's a very extreme cases. You know, there are cases of these human beings which are born with this, uh, because of these either genetic diseases, the genetic problems, or developmental problems. They are born in this way, right? They're called intersex people. And these are very extreme rare cases, but on top of that, these people uh, are either, they produce only one type of gamete, so either large gametes or small gametes, or they are sterile. So they can't have the ability to either fertilize or be fertilized. So um, yeah, many of these cases, you know, are medical conditions. So we know that something went wrong. That particular human being shouldn't have developed in that way. Something went wrong, something bad happened. And that's why we have these rare cases. So again, remember, this is not the exception. It's the exception sometimes that confirms the rule that by nature, uh, by biology, by how you know, God has designed all things to be, that human beings should be born either males or females, you know, with the ability to produce large gametes or small gametes. And then, then there is all the part of the sexual characteristics, right? The chromosomes or the uh, external um, uh, genitals uh, or the internal, you know, the different, the different differences between males and females in terms of biology, uh, but that's a secondary thing. You know, primarily talking about biological definition, sex is just about the male, the one that produces small gametes, female, the one that produces large gametes. And that's it. So um, I know that I cannot really tackle this um, topic, you know, expo exploring everything. So I'm sorry for that. If you guys have any more questions, just let me know in the comments below. Um, now, taking a look at what the Bible has to say. The Bible actually agrees with biology, of course. Uh, God being the creator of everything, 
Uh, but uh, it says here in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So we see here the binary of sex, right? Males and females. There is no other sex. There is just males and females. And, uh, and there is also here Matthew chapter 19, verse 4, where Jesus is now quoting this same statement. So we find this statement of males and females, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Here Jesus is saying, and he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female? So again, it's a quote directly from Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Uh, so we can see here that the Bible agrees uh, that there are two sexes, males and females, and that it is God that has created them. You know, we are all human beings are created in the image of God, and that's why we have value, we have worth. Our worth doesn't come from how we view ourselves, for what we believe. Our worth doesn't come from how we look like or how we identify ourselves. Uh, our view, our worth comes because we're created in the image of God. And that's why human beings are worthy of dignity and value. And, uh, and yeah, so that's the first episode about this, um, the, this topic about sex. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. God bless you and see you. Bye-bye.